Good morning, guys. Welcome to the But First Coffee Wake Up Call. I am Kelly Greeno. I do these three days a week for you guys to help you understand that you don't have to wait to live the life that you want to live just because you're a mom or a dad or a parent of any kind, that you don't have to sacrifice the things that you want to do or like to do, like traveling the world, taking vacations, dating your spouse, and actually having the connected, passionate marriage that you want, or creating the business or finding the career that you love. We don't have to wait for that stuff in order to uh, do what we want to do. We don't have to wait for the kids to grow up. We don't have to wait for that correct promotion to come in or to win the lottery. And stuff that we can do right now. So I get on three days a week with these wake up calls to talk to you guys about how you can start doing that stuff. And this week we are focusing on uh, nutrition and health and specifically the self care pieces of that and why it's important to be aware of those things when you're looking to change parts of your life, to up level your life, to make it the way that you want it and be the happy, amazing person that you want to be. And today we're talking about specifically emotional eating. And I want to first put this disclaimer out there that I am not a an emotional eating expert. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a dietitian. Um, so this is just really two important things to kind of understand if you find yourself being an emotional eater. Um, the first one is to first know that we are all emotional eaters. The things that we eat and take in and the situations that we um, socialize in, they always have some relation to food. And it's the memories it creates, the way that food makes us feel. And it's to some extent, we are all emotional eaters. I mean, think about right now, okay, it's October. So think about that the holiday seasons are coming up. When you think about your favorite and best holiday memories, what are the things that you think of, right? There's usually some connection to food. Even if it's not about you like eating that amazing piece of pumpkin pie, it's about being around your family and friends for that holiday, that Christmas party, and there was food served there, and there was a smell in the air, and there was, um, you know, you maybe you had coffee with a really great friend. Like it's our kind of a societal thing to, you know, when you get at some to somebody's house when you arrive, one of the first things they ask you is like, "Oh, would you like something to eat? Can I get you something to drink?" Like we connect a lot of our socializing around food, our connection with other people. It's around food. You know, you see a friend and it's like, "Hey, you want to meet up for a cup of coffee? You want to go grab some lunch? You want to go grab a donut?" Like there's always some connection with that food. It's a part of being a community and connecting together. So on some level, we are all emotional eaters. We connect our food and the times that we socialize and create connection with people around food in some way, shape or form. Not every time, but I'm saying the majority of the time there is something like that involved. Now, the second thing to understand about emotional eating is that it's very rarely actually about the food and it's very rarely about the emotions that you're feeling superficially at that time. So one of the most common things is that people are like, oh, when I get so stressed, I you know, just grab a bag of chips and eat the entire bag. Like we, we eat when we're stressed, right? That's kind of one of the really common things that I hear a lot. And like that's really important to know that you eat when you're stressed, but there's something deeper than that and underneath that and there's an actual reason why you choose to be triggered that way and you choose to respond that way and we typically have like that type of food that we are uh, favoring when we do emotionally eat or um, indulge in certain things and it's really important to know that it's hardly ever that like first superficial reason that you think like you think it's because you're stressed that you're gonna go eat that bag of chips or for me it's always ice cream or a big bowl of cereal or a box of cereal let's be real here um, so understanding that we're all emotional eaters on some level we connect emotions, connecting with people, relationships around food. There's always some type of like food involved in there, um, ingestion of some type of food or drink. And the second part is to know that it's never that top super, superficial reason. There's always something deeper that is making us believe that this is how we need to react. It's controlling how we respond that way and why we do the things that we do. And that comes down to our belief system and the blocks that we have in our mindset. And that's why I'm talking about nutrition this week because the mindset work is something that I'm an expertise in. I have an expertise in. Um, so 
know that everybody's an emotional leader in some con some level. So don't beat yourself up over it. Don't make it a huge, giant, big deal. It's not about the food. It's not about the fact that I, like for instance, we don't buy cookies and chips in our house because I know that I sit and eat them. But I also know that it's not just I'm eating out of boredom or I eat them when I'm stressed or I grab them because I'm addicted. Like there's a science reason why certain foods are more addictive than others, why you can't eat just one cheese it why you have to eat like handful after handful after you have just one. Scientifically, they're created that way. But it's more about understanding myself and having a level of self-awareness to understand why I do the things that I do and not just related to food and emotional eating. Our emotions are a response to what we believe and what our mindset is and what the thoughts are that are in our head. So if we can start to understand ourselves better, raise our level of self-awareness, really understand ourselves rather than trying so hard to control every other outside circumstance in our life, trying to control the food that's allowed on our plate, trying to control the people and change our husband and you know, force our kids to behave a certain way. And we try so hard to control so much that is outside of this. Um, it's the political season right now. I mean, there's a heck of a lot of posts in my newsfeed about people trying to control who I vote for or don't vote for based on what they're sharing and what they're doing. And rather than focusing on everything external, on the food itself, focusing on ourselves and really understanding that if we grow ourselves, if we raise our level of self-awareness, we can overcome a lot of these habits that we're unhappy with. We can reframe them. We can rebuild our thoughts and mindset and find a way to live the life that we want to live. If emotional eating is something that you that bothers you, like dive deep into that. Why? Why does it bother you? Where does it come from? Why do you respond that way? Where did you learn that habit? What belief do you have that, that causes that reaction, right? Because we have a situation happens that triggers a thought, that triggers an action. Like it's an emotion, it's a cycle. That's the, the way that our mind works. What we believe impacts how we respond to the stimulation and situations in our lives. And when we start to understand that and really become self-aware, that's when we can create the change. So it's not about, I'm angry, I'm going to go eat ice cream. I'm sad, I'm going to go eat a bag of chips. I'm, um, you know, grieving, I need casseroles. Like we, we associate so much with food, but the choices that we actually make come from what our mindset is around food, our relationship is with food, and the emotions that we feel and the stimulation, things that are going down on deeper under the surface. So the best way to help yourself is to raise your level of self-awareness to become aware of when do you eat that way? What do you eat? What do you turn to? What has happened? What's recent? How do you feel? And really the best way to raise your level of self-awareness is to ask for help from somebody and get the outside perspective. That's one of the things that I have done over the past two years that has changed our life. And that's why you guys are here. Like I share my life with you and how much we have grown and changed and my house and my home and my marriage and my parenting and my business and my personal growth and my self-confidence and the fact that I am a mom as well as all these other things and it's because I asked for help and I hired a coach because you can't see the forest through the trees we can't do surgery on ourselves right to be super cliche and give you all these metaphors like understanding that we need somebody else to help us get that clarity to give us that other perspective to help us find the solutions that are sometimes right in front of us to make the connections to why we do things and understanding ourselves. That is one of the best ways that we can help ourselves to hire a coach some or you know go see a therapist if that's something that's more um, that speaks to you more. There are so many options for us out there but asking for help is one of the ways that we can help ourselves better and one of the ways we can achieve results faster in every area of our life, in our health and fitness, in our mindset, in our business, in our relationships, in our marriage, in our friendships, in um, your parenting. There are people and resources available for you to reach out to and ask for help from because it will get you better results and faster results. And I don't know about you, but I mean, life is already going by so, so freaking fast. I mean, it's already almost mid-October and my kids are already nine and six. I've already been married for almost 
nine years. Like, I can't believe how fast time has gone. I don't have more time to waste being unhappy and struggling on my own, trying to wing it, trying to understand things that I don't understand and trying to learn things that somebody else could help me with to find the answer. I always relate it to when we go shopping, right? If you are going into a shopping mall or into the grocery store and you've got three things on your list and you get down to that last thing and you're walking down every single aisle trying to find it and you can't find it anywhere and then 20 minutes later you finally ask somebody that works there where this is and they can literally tell you like down to the like third can from the left where that item is and exactly what aisle it is and you can walk right to it in a matter of a minute you wasted the 20 minutes of frustration trying to do it on your own. That's one of my favorite analogies about why you should ask for help, why you should go see a therapist, hire a coach, work with somebody else because we struggle on our own. We can't do this stuff on our own. You don't know what you don't know. We need somebody else to have that perspective and opinion and be the person that helps guide us through this stuff and helps teach us and we can do it better and we can do it faster when we actually throw our pride to the side and ask for help. So when it comes to emotional eating, everybody's an emotional eater on some concept. It is built into our society and the way that our culture is. Food is a huge part of every culture and it's connected to the emotions and the community and the connection and the relationships that we build. So don't beat yourself up over being an emotional eater. We are all emotional eaters. That is the way our culture and our human instinct works. We like that connection and community feeling as it relates to being around food. Um, also knowing that it's never the superficial thing that is the problem, you know, or the issue. Emotional eating is so much deeper than like, oh, today's a sad day, my heart just got broken, I'm gonna go eat a pint of ice, ice cream. Um, it's about going deeper than that, getting to the roots of the problem to understand why. Because if you're looking to fix it, it's like you can't put a bandage over, over a, a gash in your leg. Like you need to actually heal it and fix it. Like you can't just put a band-aid solution over something like this. Um, as it relates to a lot of areas of our life, we need to understand why we do those things, why we feel that way, why we respond that way and where that comes from and really get to the root of the problem so that we can fix it, so we can get over it. So if emotional eating is something that you find yourself turning to a lot and um, it's starting to affect a lot of different areas of your life, like dive deeper and start asking yourself better questions to get better answers. Dig deeper down to the roots. Don't just pull out the leaves that you can see, you know, by not buying the cookies and chips and um, cinnamon rolls and donuts. Like just that's not fixing the problem. I mean, that's helping yourself. Absolutely. Setting yourself up for success. But getting down to the root of the problem and helping yourself change how you think, what you believe, understanding yourself, raising your level of self-awareness, that is what will help you actually fix the problem and the issue and create the change that you're looking for, to be the person you wanna to be, to live the life that you wanna to live, to feel the way that you want to feel, to get over the struggle. And the best, fastest way we can do that is asking for help. That's exactly what I'm here for. This is exactly why I have that spark session available to you guys. It's a four hour session focused on you diving deeper, getting to the roots, fixing that problem, like reframing your mindset and belief to show you the connections and perceptions and new way of thinking to really raise your level of self-awareness around the choices you make and why you make them. So I'll put the link in the comments below in the video so that you guys can click on it nice and easy because it's that's exactly why I have the Spark session. It's a four hour session focused on just you because you're finally ready to see better results and see faster results. That's the des why I designed it that way. So I'll put that link there. I hope this helps you guys. Um, I'm here Friday. We are talking on our last piece of emotional eating and why, or our last piece of self-care and nutrition and why we need to be aware of the things that we're choosing to eat and nourish our bodies within the meals that we make and the choices that we make because even when we're like in a super 
rush like we tell ourselves like oh it's good enough like I got too much going on so we got to stop by fast food and McDonald's and all this stuff and like why our choices even and especially in that time when we're super busy make a huge difference on our self-care and the choices we're making ourselves so that's for on Friday um, I will talk to you Friday morning have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll talk to you soon